Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and gender nonconformists. It's Jeff, and welcome to another flashback. We're off this week. However, we present to you a CUL flashback to episode 321 on July 12th, 2015, five years ago. In this episode, you will hear us interview the truly amazing one and only special guest, Miss Tammy. Let's take a listen to our discussion with her about women and their involvement in the bear community in this special flashback show to CLL episode 321. In this episode of Cubs Out Loud, the guys are joined by the lovely Miss Tammy to chat about Goldilocks, women who are friendly with the bear community. As we discuss the idea of allowing biological women into bear clubs and bars and even growler, we'll learn more about why Miss Tammy got involved in the community. So make sure your bet is just right as CLL 321 starts now. It's July 12th, 2015. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. That makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 321. And, well, let's get right into it. Um, but uh, first off, we need to introduce our wonderful, wonderful guest, Miss Tammy! Hello! Yay! Puppet <laughs> arm flail. Woo! <laughs> arm flail. Okay. Anyways. Uh, we're going to... Let's get right through this part. At the time of this recording, I am jobless. Aww. My contract ended on Thursday. Surprisingly, I did not cry. I did get a little verklempt. <laughs> I did hand my badge over to uh, uh, the the one the Sask CS man at my campus uh, where I was working. <laughs> and shook his hand, although I wish I could have given a hug. Um, and uh, and just left. It was so. Uh, I, I got to say, okay, I'm going to say this one last time. Don't forget your time cards. <laughs> and good night, kids. Oh. Everybody's like, oh, no, no, no. I got candy on the way out and uh, at least a couple of hugs. A hug, but uh, hopefully by the time people are hearing this, I have a new contract. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> good news, bad news. Uh, tomorrow I'm ex- uh, Tomorrow, from when we're recording this, um, I'm thinking about just getting up, uh, going to uh, the bolt office, and and being all you know, s- relatively snazzy looking, uh, just a polo and slacks and uh, non tennis shoes, probably. Tennis hard. And uh, have a copy of my resume and be like, okay. Uh, we need to find out what's next. We need to do it soon because I don't have that much spare money. <laughs> I don't want to apply for unemployment because that just sucks. Uh. Um, so, <sighs> yeah. In the meantime, uh, I still got paid for Friday, which was everybody was off anyways. And I uh, had enough hours that will pay, still paid me for, for holiday pay. So I at least got a full week's worth of pay. So well, that's always good. Yeah, so it's it's not that bad. I get that pay this Friday. Mm. So uh, I still got a paycheck for at least one more week, <laughs> and we'll find out what happens after that. But uh, I've been uh, getting some of my alts to uh, the, the legendary quest and trying to get all of them to it. So I've got. Stuff to do in the meantime. Um, nothing for Fourth of July, just me and Sonic hanging out at home. And I had a nice, good old American cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Not with that American cheese, but cheddar. 
Good stuff. Oh, I like the cheddar too. That's good. Yeah. Cheddar makes it better. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. What's going on, Damon? Um, I have, I, well, I've actually officially been in the house as of the recording of this podcast, not quite a week, but by the time the show airs, I will have been in the house for at least two weeks. So officially no apartment, no nothing. I'm here, here, here. Um, and I've had my first official holiday here. Um, the 4th of July, sort of, um, (laughs) well, okay, let's, let's, let's. I'll break it down. I went to Columbus on the um, 4th of July, went up there for the Ohio Ohio Leather Alliance's Code Jock Night, um, as we were talking about earlier. Um, It was interesting. Got to run, ran into a few people I knew, uh, got to meet a few people I've been talking to online forever and just finally got a chance to meet, which is cool. Um, But it wasn't all that great. And unfortunately due to the fact that my partner and, um, the person who drove, um, had to work today. Um, we had to leave like at 1230. So just as things were starting to get busy about midnight ish, we were leaving. So yeah, it was okay. Um, but I'm learning now that, um, the 4th of July kind of is a good thing and a bad thing. I am not a big fan of the fireworks. And here I've had the big ass booms <laughs> of, of large ass fireworks, which I'm assuming are not. <laughs> are Kentucky. <laughs> Better because they are very loud and they went on for most of the day on the third. I wasn't here on the fourth. I can't even imagine what that was like. Um, but um, it's, Bittersweet also because I'm realizing that um, normally where I used to live, I was near the river. Um, so I would always hear and sometimes even see red, white and boom, um, which is here in town. Um, it's done on the river. It's a you know fireworks thing for the 4th of July kind of thing. And so I didn't get to hear that this time. So, oh, well, but that's OK. It was it was a good, good weekend. Um, and it's good to just sort of kind of chill out nice yeah Gary um I'm in gay camping recovery mode (laughs) 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 it's kind of like bear run recovery mode but more Mm. outdoorsy more outdoors more allergies less less fur (laughs) coughing um, I smell like a bonfire, so yeah. you know. <laughs> I heard you all got rained on a little bit. Uh we did not this weekend where we were up in okay. uh, northern Ohio. We lucked out. It was perfect weather all four days. It was great. And Everyone was quite happy. And you were where? Freedom I was, Valley? Yeah, I was at Freedom Valley at a campground which is in New London, Ohio, which is uh maybe a half an hour south of Sandusky, Ohio. So it's over uh, west of Cleveland towards Chicago and that. But no, it was it was great. And I got to see Mr. Jeff Workman Rock Cub uh, do a, a live performance last night for Ooh. July 4th for an hour. Um, it was a good show. Got to hang out with uh, him and his beau, Ronnie, and their uh, Ronnie's gorgeous pit bull, Zoe. She's such Aww. a sweetheart. Um. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to just like hang out, and meet new people, and you know, of course, party and drink and carry on and all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> I'm just it's so funny because I just so I left camp, you know, right at the last minute that I could leave camp in order to make it home on time, and I haven't even quite fully unpacked. And as we're sitting down, and I'm like, oh, I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this. This staying up till four in the morning shit. It's gotta stop. Uh, like, it's just, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what um, camping, gay camping, is like in a few weeks. Couple weeks, actually. Fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. They don't have air conditioning. I am not about no kind of camping. <laughs> Well, oh, the, Miss Tammy, <laughs> I, I, as I say, for Miss Tammy's like uh, notification, or, or she's aware, I am not a tent camper. 
That is not my style. No, uh, no. I did it in Cub style. Scouts and Boy Scouts. Ain't happening again. Uh, I worked at a, at a gay campground uh, for a number of seasons. And, yeah, it just reaffirmed. I'm like, there are two things I don't like being. I don't like being cold and I don't like being wet. Mm. Meaning, meaning like that combination together. So there's nothing worse than waking up in the morning covered in dew and it's like 43 degrees because the temperature dropped overnight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't care what you do with your tent and an air mattress and a tarp and a nope, 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 nope. It just never seems to work out. No. Mm-hmm. So I go and I stay with friends of mine who have a trailer. Ah. Oh, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, granted, they don't have a high end trailer, but it's functional and it works. You know, we we try to not use the bathroom in it because there's a shower house, and you know, put the stink where it belongs, not at, and where you're trying to sleep. Um, <laughs> you know, just little rules like that. But yeah, no, it's um, it's good fun. And Jason and Bill are, are great guys, and we had a great conversation this weekend, and they were, you know, they reaffirm. Friendship. I don't know if that happens for anybody else, but it was great to talk to people and have them actually tell you to your face, which may seem odd for some. Thank you for like coming and spending time with us. And do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if we say that all that much to each other. I think we take for granted our friendships and we yeah, I agree. connect on that level. So I was I was pleasantly surprised to have them be like, we love having you come and blah, blah, blah. And this and that. And, and we're all very low key. Like we don't really get in each other's way and they're extra polite. Like I slept in. Saturday, and uh, Bill made fun of me, and he was like, "You gonna sleep all day?" And I was like, "I was like, listen, bitch, I got in at four thirty in the morning. There's a reason my my ass is still in bed at ten. <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't be kidding on me." <laughs> but I knew at today. Ten's not stuff. late. Well, considering his partner spent all day Friday in bed, I'm like, really, you ain't got no room. <laughs> <laughs> somebody drank way it's like way beyond the liver processing limit just <laughs> it was it was a lot but no it was fun i was glad i get to do it and i just realized on the road home i get to do it again in like four weeks four, four oh. weeks. Nice. yeah i'm going back for um arctosis uh bear oh. camping. this was this was the holiday weekend thing and getting to see jeff perform which is great. And, uh, yeah, going back again. So I'm going to do camping twice this summer. Just fun. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy is a Tammy is campy as motel six. That's just, that is, <laughs> that is Miss Tammy. That's, form. that's low end. Right yeah. There. <laughs> I, I, cause I, I totally understand and respect you. Um, we are doing a cabin. Um, Jim and I, when we go to Rose nine in a couple of weeks, um, that was sort of my compromise as opposed to spending about 30, 40 bucks more to get an actual room in the guest house. Um, I was like, okay, I could, if I can do a cabin, cause at least there's four walls. I'm, there's not a bit on the floor, <laughs> you know, I think I can deal with that. You know, um, we still see how well that goes, <laughs> but I wanted to I, I wanted to do I didn't want to get a room. I wanted to actually quote unquote rough it. <laughs> oh, well, I've been there and done that. And I can safely say that is not something that I look forward to. If there is a hotel anywhere around with a hot tub and room service, that will be where I'm at. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm, sounds I'm like a, a good plan. I'm of the ilk to not be on the ground. And to have like four walls, like a ceiling and a, and a you know floor kind of thing, so I can uh-huh. be protected from the elements. So yeah, and yeah. use the AC if you need to use the AC. Absolutely. So Ooh. if Ooh. what it was, it was oh Tammy, it was like seventy to seventy five. Oh, it didn't okay. Get, it didn't get real hot this weekend. No real clouds. It was clear nights and clear sky. It was it was gorgeous. Oh. And I am not burned to a crisp. I'm quite proud. So yay. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Yep, that's that was my thing. Well, what? I was lazy this weekend. Laid around and watched the Twilight Zone sci-fi um, marathon, and me and my piggy Hammy went out and watched some fireworks. But he was not really about the fireworks, so we had to come back in early. 
Because <laughs> I guess when you're a prey animal and things start popping off around you that could be mistaken for gunfire, <laughs> you kind of mm-hmm. don't want to be in the vicinity. Exactly. That's yeah. True. Yeah, I can uh-huh. see that. And that would be, you know, disconcerting. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. With that, let's get right into this. Gary, what's happening on Facebook? We have a new Facebook like since the last show we recorded. Woohoo! And he has the best first name in the world. <laughs> <laughs> It happens to be Gary McCoy. So, welcome to the fandom. Yes, welcome. Now we just need more Damons and Jeffs. (laughs) (laughs) Jeffs probably will be easier. Uh, Ah! And you know what? I had a new sound clip for this. Hold on. Pause the show. (laughs) (laughs) What in the world? Apparently, I was using you. Don't worry. I'll fix that in post. (laughs) (laughs) Gary. That was was interesting. Urban Dictionary with Gary. All right. So uh, I found this one recently. It was posted on Facebook, and I could not stop laughing for five minutes. So um, apparently, we have a new word that we can add to our uh, perhaps everyday lives, depending it's oh actually a phrase. It's called sausage fears. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> okay hold on. It is. <laughs> so the definition is a term to describe the actions of straight men who are afraid of showing any physical or emotional bond to the men that they are friends with. This is akin to saying no homo, quote unquote, and as a result of toxic masculinity and homophobia. The example they gave was, why is Derek afraid of hugging Jonathan? The answer, he's got mad sausage fears, bro. (laughs) Wow. I know, Uh, it's so crazy. I just love the the senses that that they have in in these things. It's just weird. He's got mad sausage fears, bro. Um. So there you go, Tammy. Now you can you have a description to use of men who are afraid of masculine, like, you know, their toxic masculinity, homophobia uh, surfaces. I had words for that, uh. but it was not sausage fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do share. Oh, no, mm, I'm not going to share. Okay. <laughs> I try to stay positive, if at all possible. Uh, but it's so much fun to make fun of people sometimes. Anyways, moving on. Uh, and uh, let's go right into our weekly topic. Gary? Well, the reason we have Miss Tammy on is because we uh, had a discussion quite some time ago. And I really wanted to have a kind of a, I don't even want to say like a, a lesson but kind of bring up a discussion about a new thing that's, I think, coming into the bear community that some folks are not aware of and uh, I think is very polarizing. Mm-hmm. And I only think it's polarizing because people seem to be of a certain mindset about this topic. So the reason why we're calling today's show Goldilocks and the Three Bears is because we have Miss Tammy with us. And she recently went on a journey of changing part of her bear community that she's aware of and joined a bear club as an official member, correct? I do. And what I want to talk to you about is how did this come about? Like kind of what was the history in regards to what you, where this came about, how you wanted to do it, the process you went through as, as much as you're willing to talk about. Cause I realize sure. everybody's experience is a little different, but From my experience in my club that I've been involved with since 99, there was a woman who was involved way back from like 99 till maybe about 2002 or so. She was straight Mm -hmm. and her husband, I don't know if he was a paid member, but they came to club functions and he physically, quote unquote, was a bear. And she liked men like him 
And he liked being around us, even though there was no, you know, there was no uh, physical interest. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, you know, they were swingers and they were trying to hook up or anything. It was just simply they liked being around us. And so it was kind of, you know, a very reciprocal, friendly kind of thing. And then they kind of went, uh, they had kids. They, you know, kind of stopped coming to functions. And I haven't really seen or heard anything. So this wasn't the first time I heard of a woman becoming involved in in bear events or activities or club organization stuff. But Mm -hmm. When I've kind of talked about it openly, I'm really surprised by how some people feel about it. And I'm like, there's there's so much about this, I think, that has yet to take place. Yeah, mm. I agree with you. So what was what happened that you that this process came about? Because part of it, I believe you said was that you had to approach the club and kind of petition or. Uh, yeah, I did. And, and if I could even back up a little bit further sure. than sure. than that um i've always um kind of had a fascination with bears um even um when i was younger i've had kind of a fascination with bears um just the the body type the a larger body frame um, I would just found it very attractive. And then, of course, you know, I had uh, a marriage and two lovely children and then got divorced and then began to go out and explore a little bit more on my own. And, um, you know, as some people do, you get to be a little more adventurous the second time around. And somehow I found myself in a shop that sells special novelties. And... Um, I wanted to buy some magazines and the magazines that I wanted to buy were all of these bear magazines. And so when I was paying for them, the guy was like, you, you know, these are like gay men. Right. And I said, I don't care. I don't care who they, what they are. That's what I want to look at. Um, and so that was kind of the first clue to me that if you're in a, a shop that sells, you know, specific novelty items. And even they look at you like you're crazy because that's what you wanted to look at. It seems out of the norm for you. Then I might be a little bit different than some people. So for me, it's just a a body type that I've always been attracted to. No, um, I'm not always around men that are heterosexual. Primarily, (laughs) most of the bear men that I know are gay men. And um, I guess kind of my first involvement in it was going to um, a part of Kentucky where there's a, a, how will I say, just a high concentration of bears. There's a very active bear club um, in that area. And... um, I guess is it, it's okay for me to say their name? Sure. Okay. Sure. The Kentucky Bourbon Bears in um, <clears throat> Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, I traveled to Lexington to go to the bar there several times with some of my friends. And I was like, oh, my God, look at all these bears. This is awesome. <laughs> and so it wasn't as though um, I was a brand new face to them. I'd actually known several of them and been around them and been to their events and been to bar nights with them and things like that for probably a couple or three years at least before I ever decided that I would like to apply for membership. Um, and the way that I did that was to, um, look at their website and look at what they described as their mission, because I think that's important, uh, to do is to look at what they have described as what their mission is and how they've described membership and who can be a member and who they have decided um, to deliberately, and I don't want to use the exclude, but um, in some ways that's what it is, but who they have decided to specifically target as their audience that they're going to cater to in terms of a group. And it didn't say anywhere on their website that you couldn't be a woman, number one, or that you had to be a gay male. So um, that was my first hint that I, I felt comfortable approaching them because it wasn't an exclusivity issue at that point. And what I did was I downloaded an application 
and um, looked at what their requirements were. And then I wrote a letter to the club and I asked, um, petitioned them to consider uh, consider me for membership. I felt like at that point that I knew enough of them and particular enough of the gentlemen that had um, seats, uh, board seats at that time. They were, had, you know, um, they have, you, you know, seats that they're elected to. And I felt like at that point that there were some of them that knew me well enough that it seemed like a legitimate request. So that's what I did. I sat down and wrote something very thoughtful and let them know why I wanted to join, why I was going to seek membership, and as a member, what um, if they would consider that, what I would hope that they would consider. And I did not ask for full membership. I asked if they would consider some form of membership, if I could be an associate member or I could be something that I could in some way align myself with them um, on on a more tangible level, but that that needed to be on their terms, that they needed hmm. to be defi- to able to define what that looked like. And hmm. so my understanding is that they met um, for their meetings and they discussed it and they voted about it. And hmm. at that point, they decided to allow me to be a full member. So I've been a full member um, since then, and my husband was too for a while, but he doesn't go everywhere, so screw it. I'm not paying for him anymore. (laughs) 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 He's just a designated driver. So um, anyway, that's how that kind of came about. Um, Hmm. And... And I've had another occasion to um, join um, a primarily, um, hmm, how do I say this? I, probably what I consider a little bit more of a hookup site, but it is a primarily gay male site, Growler. Growler. Yeah. And it, the world has not stopped spinning, guys. <laughs> it's actually been great. Crazy. Yeah. Well, you, you bring up a good point. So we'll we'll work backwards from the latest thing. You had talked to us when we recorded a previous show and let us know that you had just joined Growler. Yeah. Uh, and then I thought you waited to get approval. You got approval. But then I thought your profile was suspended temporarily. Well, what happened was I did I, – I sent them an email and um, – told them that I would like to join and listed the reasons why I would like to join and made sure that they understood that um, I wasn't there to um, do anything to make anybody feel uncomfortable, that I wasn't going to be trying to hit on men, that we're not actively seeking that. I, I feel very strongly about that. It is a gay male space, and I don't feel like I have the right to actively um, be solicitous mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. manner. Um, because they're there because they're looking for a certain thing and I don't have the right to enter into that space. That's, um, a gay male bear identified space and insert myself in, in an intrusive manner. Uh, if I'm invited in, then that's one thing. So I don't think just being there and being a part of it is intrusive. I don't go around and unlock my pictures for people and do all that kind of stuff. I don't do that. If someone responds to me, I'll respond back. Um, but I, I sent them an email and I told them that I would like to join. And their uh, website says that they'll respond within 24 hours to any questions. Well, I didn't get any response, and I waited over a week, and I never got a response. So um, I spent one Saturday morning reading, you know those like things that are terms of agreement that none of us really ever read, Mm -hmm. and it's like 500 pages, and you just go flip, 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 flip (laughs) to the very end, Mm -hmm. and then go, I agree. Well, I really did read every word. Um, it wow. took a large portion of my Saturday morning one time, and I read every single word to make sure that I wasn't doing anything to violate what they would describe as their terms of agreement for users. And I couldn't find anything that it specifically excluded a female. Mm-hmm. So I did join a paid membership. Um, and within... 
Um, let's see. Within 24 hours, my um, locked pictures, two locked pictures, and I have no pictures with any nudity whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's appropriate. Um, were there was a picture one picture of me smoking a cigar and another picture of something but apparently when i cropped them they didn't crop out somebody else's face and so they had removed those two pictures and i think at that point they were aware of my presence okay <laughs> well yeah <laughs> then um within about eight hours after that they um suspended my profile Aww. And so I sent them an email. And again, I think polite is much better than anything else. I don't think yeah. you get anywhere being an asshat. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorite words. Catch more flies with honey. Um, you know, and it's not always honey. It's just being respectful yeah. and having um, adult dialogue yeah. about something. Um and so I did, and I asked, you know, had I done something wrong? Had I, did they feel like I had done something or that there was, I was excluded from membership, and that's okay. If they finally decided that I was, then, you know. Um, and I still didn't get a response. I don't think they knew really how to respond. So I responded back and said, let me make, let me help you, because I may not, I promise you I'm not the only woman here. But I probably am the only woman here that's honest about being here. Yeah. That has um, a female name that identifies me and my profile describes me and my interests and what I am and what my background is. And it, it is honest that I am a, I'm a biological female. Yeah. Um, and I offered to... Um, help them with planning for future if that was if this is something that continues for them to discuss what you know maybe women are allowed to join but they, these are some rules regarding behavior and if you do this or this or this um, or maybe you would have to join as a sponsored member you'd have to be known to some of the other members first yeah. in other words to kind of have um, not really a chaperone. That's not the word I'm looking for, but sort of like a sponsor. A sponsor is a good word. Yeah. Somebody that could vouch for you that, um, that this is not somebody that's going to be disrespectful or violate a space that's primarily a gay male space. They, um, walk here gingerly and are respectful of the space that they're in. But for some unknown reason, <laughs> Um, they're quirky like me and they feel comfortable <laughs> in the bear community. I don't know why I like guys that are bigger or why I like their armpits or I don't know that. I mean, I knew that when I was like 14 or 15 years old, you know, how like, well, you don't know how teenage girls talk, but let me tell you how teenage <laughs> girls talk. they talk amongst themselves about boys and we talk about, you know, who's cute and all that. And I was like, I know, right. And like their armpits. And I knew when everybody else froze and looked at me that that was not okay to say. <laughs> that was not a common um, fetish for most of the other girls that were friends of mine. And so I knew that there were things that were kind of different about me. Yeah. And that I liked a lot of things that more gay male men liked. I guess I'll just say that. Yeah. So anyway, um, I finally did get a response back from the, one of the tech support people. And, um, they said, you know, the reason that your account got suspended is you cannot have a pub, a picture of yourself in the public profile as a woman. And so I said, well, okay. What could I put there? Could I use a avatar? Could I use a cartoon? Could I put a picture of a tattoo? Could I? And the poor guy, <laughs> who was very nice, and I can't remember his name now, said, yes, go with a tattoo. Go with a tattoo. We'll see if that works. If they boot you off again, contact me directly. Hmm. And so I did. I changed my little public, you know, picture to... A picture of one of my tattoos and um, 
I have not had any trouble since then. Hmm. So I'm most re- I have not gotten any negative responses whatsoever. Um, I've gotten a lot of interesting invitations. I'll say that. Uh oh, I'm more um, spy guys on there than we thought. Um. Well, you know, even guys that don't necessarily identify as bi, some are very curious. Huh. Apparently, I'm a bit of an anomaly. And so, um, and, and also, there's also the other caveat that I'm also uh, very interested in leather. Yeah. And so, there have been some men that are very curious about that aspect. And, you know, in some ways, I think that's a very safe aspect for them to explore because I don't have the same kind of sexual connotation as um, yeah. a, a partner and and... So I've actually met a couple of people that were very interested in learning a couple of things. Um, and I and, and actually have asked to kind of sit and have coffee and talk about that. And I think that's just because they feel they don't feel the added extra pressure of a, a, a sexual connotation with that. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? You know, it actually makes perfect sense to me. I've been thinking about that. That would probably be. It wouldn't have to, it wouldn't be that full on, like, completely sexual, physical relationship. It would be ultimately that kind of submission domination without the purpose, without the sexual overtone, potential sexual overtone. Yeah. I was actually talking with someone earlier today. It's funny how that, how that works out that attributed, um, Leather and King to sex. I'm going, no, it's not just sex. It's more, there's more to it. <laughs> and for some, there's no sex involved at all. So, but it's just, I find that very interesting. That, and I can see that being working for you. Um, someone potentially reaching out to someone who is not, they would not be technically sexually attracted to. And using that, trying to figure out that dynamic as opposed to just making it potentially all about sex. So it's been interesting. <laughs> I've gotten a few, what are some of those like, um, you know, those like wolf things that you can send out. I got one that somebody said they wanted to drink my bath water. That was really <laughs> funny. <laughs> okay. You might as well be treated like the rest of us. And, I, yeah. And, and get the I, same I silly ones. ones. And it's really funny when I travel now because, you know, because I'm a new... And that is just like the coolest crap in the world, you all. Like one night when I was in Indianapolis... Some of the guys in the bar were trying to figure out if I had left yet or not because they, they couldn't find me. And so they said, oh, look her up on Growler and see how far away she is. That is so cool, you all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when I go to like different areas now that are places where people are not as used to seeing me, then my phone like blows up for a while mm-hmm. um, because it's a new you know, a new person in there. And then when they click on it, and then a lot of times when I was in Indianapolis recently and a lot of people were looking at their growler and they're like, Oh my God, that's you. They were in the bar with me. Yep. <laughs> and they would walk over and they, I, I've not had anybody negative, you know, say anything negative yet. But then again, one of the caveats of that is being respectful of that space. Exactly. Um, I do look at some people's profiles. I don't look at them and open my pictures because, um, for one thing, I don't want them to be offended. They're not naked pictures, but I don't want them to um, think that I'm trying to hit on them when that's not what um, right. I'm really trying to do. Yeah. I think it, it's... I'm, I'm, I, I, one of the things I think is great about this is that you are essentially being respectful of people um, without without uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, you're not you're there yes but you're there as a resource is a good way support um, you're not there to um, I am woman hear me roar you're not there to you know make waves and cause drama and all this stuff you're just sort of there if someone wants to talk to you or if you know you know, someone wants it, to find interest. You're, whatnot, you're using yeah. Growler for the social aspect, not the sexual aspect. Huh. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> she's also not using it as a political platform. No, no. You know, this isn't about, you know, women have equal rights to men and we should be included. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts. It's not – there's no malcontent or hostility or any of that kind of stuff. Well, I do think if we're both going out for the same job and we have the same qualifications, um, yeah. yeah, then it's on. Oh. But that's not what this is. Um you know, I know there have been a lot of, you know, issues with gender and women and trans men and who's in what space and all those kinds of things. And, you know, I think people just need to be thoughtful about the human being and who that person is and respectful of whatever space it is that they're trying to enter into. And not everybody fits into a perfect little box. Um I feel completely comfortable within um, a bear space, probably more comfortable in a leather bear space because I have more things in common with leather bears than I do with, I don't want to say the general bear, but yeah, I don't know, than, than bears. If mm-hmm. you say average bear, that kind of sounds like yogi bear or something, but <laughs> you know what I mean? But then than most bears. If they're leather bears, then I tend to have more in common with them. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's about, you know, not, you're not making a statement just because you're a woman and you deserve the right to be there. Do you share some common ground and some common interest? If you don't, then what's the purpose of you being there? I mean, you can almost bully your way in any place, but if it's really not a place that has your heart and you feel comfortable there and you're not there for the right reasons, then why do it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because unfortunately what you end up doing is making more enemies and creating more diversion than cohesion. And I just don't think that's right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I know from talking to you personally, Miss Tammy, that your focus has been about the camaraderie community aspect that, you know, we're just here to be friends and have fun and work towards the mission of, you know, making the community better, not only the bear community, but just the general population as well, be it through fundraising, uh, you know, whatever the the focuses are, the mission of each uh, place. So the thing I'm curious about is when you, so to speak, petitioned to Kentucky bourbon bears to join in, did mm-hmm. you, was it only that you did it like written or was there like a in-person thing? Like, did you go to a meeting and speak to the board no, or the general body? I did not go to a meeting and I deliberately did not go to a meeting um, because I wanted them to feel comfortable voicing their opinions mm-hmm. um, without my presence there. Um, it was not a unanimous decision. I had a feeling. And... Um, there were people that did not initially agree to um, allow me to petition for membership. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. You know how people are. Nobody, nobody keeps their mouth shut. So it's not <laughs> like I don't know that. Um, but that's okay. If that's what they felt and that's how they chose to vote, then that's their personal choice um that doesn't mean that i'm gonna necessarily treat them any different or be standoffish to them i'm still gonna be polite and civil uh but i kind of knew most of these men before or not i I won't say most but I, i knew a large portion of them or they had they knew me or knew of me and and had seen me at events and um, knew that I ha- would be supportive. And I don't live in Lexington. I live in Louisville. And so a lot of their events um, are in Lexington. And some of their events involve things like camping and places that um, I'm not able to attend because I'm a female. But there are things that I can do. And whenever they have events or North American beer, I try to always make baskets or put baskets together for them. Um, I mean, last year I put together a basket for them, but God, they had like 50, 1100,000 baskets. So 
Um, it wasn't something that they necessarily needed. But I think if you're going to be a part of something and you ask to be a part of it, then you need to do what you can to be supportive of mm-hmm. them. And I yeah. do. And I try to, you know, promote them as a group when I travel and promote their event. And I, they do a lot of good. They're excellent fundraisers. And um, in terms of having an event, and being a group of men that have really kind of kept things together and raised a lot of money and yeah. excellent. Um, I read all of their minutes from their meetings. I get emails. They keep in touch with me. Um, I mean, it's a good group of guys. They really do a good job. So I can't always be there physically for things. But in this instance, when they were making their decision and voting and deciding what they were going to do, I felt it was important not to be around. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't at that point because I wasn't really a member, so I couldn't attend any meetings. But I did not make any personal petitions for anybody. I simply completed the application and then forwarded it. Yeah. And and that, I think great to be respectful. I think if, if they potentially could have offered or asked you to come down, I think that would have been because um, one of the things that I'm remembering is um, the uh, North American Bear Weekend um, this past February and I believe mm-hmm. we had a conversation about this on the show on the road show, Gary, right? Right, I think what you're going to, what you're looking at, Damon is we discussed, so Ms. Tammy's caught up and she didn't hear the show, we did a, a two-parter show and then i think it was in the second part we discussed about mm-hmm. the voting for allowing mm-hmm. women to attend nab next year mm-hmm. or in the um, future be, i guess and there being an actual goldilocks contest right yeah it was actually about them have including a goldilocks contest as part of their um as part of their contest yeah yeah and um i think one of the things i remember specifically about it was um Part of the issue I know I had and probably many people had was we were misinformed um, or not informed enough when the vote was cast. Um, It was done at the start of the once you got in and registered. And then on the Saturday, you and the Derby City Girly Locks, I believe. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, spoke to the audience. I wasn't right. there. I was I was away, but I remember hearing about it and that kind of you know it. Um, and I bet I don't know if they would have changed a whole lot of people's minds, but it would have been nice to have had that conversation, had that information beforehand, and then made a vote as opposed right. to voting right at the start, right when you first get there, um, and and then like oh you know by the way here are some Goldie Locks over here that you know. We want you to hear about. So it just it um, information is important. <laughs> the information would have been more important um, had it been there. Right. And that, been- and that was the thing that we had discussed. And I think I told you that, Miss Tammy, at, after the dinner was over and I talked to you in person, I said I was disappointed the way that they put the voting together, that it, I don't think it did justice to people being educated about the issue and the issue being why this was presented and why you're voting on it. You know, right. for that si- for that size of an event, and I think there was upwards of 500 people there. Yeah, yeah. You know, there is. They, they have no clue as to what's going on. There was, to my knowledge, there was no communication ahead of time, an email, you know, something to say, hey, when you arrive, this is what's happening, so on and so forth. And to me, th- this particular area, them voting on that with the contest, I'm like, that's that's more than just picking a theme for next year. Well, a theme yeah. is important. This is really something I think that needs to be engaged in the discussion. And whether or not it goes one direction or the other, the point is people actually talk about it, think about it. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. go from there, so to speak. Well, I know. I believe that um, that the Bourbon Bears had voted on that amongst themselves. And um, um, I did not participate in, in that vote, obviously, since I'm the only – bl- there are more women now than just me. Um, but I don't know that they voted specifically or if they just discussed it. And I think as a group, they wanted to, um, 
not just um, speak f- from themselves as a group, but to open that up to the larger community to ask how people felt about it. And so, you know, I'm sure they had, that it, maybe it just wasn't communicated really well, or maybe it should have been more than just a simple question. It should have been, you know, a small paragraph or something just to explain, or how would you feel, or would you be open to this at some point but you know either either way it happened um i mean i think they did it in good faith and they um they asked and i didn't know that we were gonna um go speak in front of anybody i didn't know it until like 10 minutes before Huh. He said, can you walk up on the stage? And I said, oh, my God, I didn't wear none of my good shit. I didn't know. <laughs> um, you know, it was, so I think they were making every effort to welcome people into their community uh, that they identify as allies. And, you know, allies have responsibilities, too. And yeah. um, I just had this discussion, actually, with someone um yesterday that made a very negative statement about women who spend a lot of time in some of the same circles that I do. It was very, I found it very um, hateful about heterosexual women. Now, I'm not speaking necessarily about my my sexuality or anybody else's, but um, whatever anybody chooses, Whatever their sexuality is, whatever their gender is, if they associate with a group of people, whatever group of people that is, and they support you with their time and their energy and their caring and their monies and they picket for you and they walk in parades for you and they make deliberate choices about who they vote into office for you, then they are your ally Mm -hmm. and they deserve some space on your plate. That doesn't mean that they have to have half of the plate or three fourths of the plate, but by God, they deserve, they deserve at least a sliver. Mm -hmm. And, um, I told him that that really hurt my feelings that, that he had said something like that. I don't think that I, um, deserve to be in a space that detracts from something that um, gay men cannot enjoy if I'm there. Yeah. I don't think I have the right to do that. But in, in fact, um, if, if you've ever noticed, I don't come to North American Bear until later on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And, and I've been pretty regularly <laughs> because I don't feel like that I need to in, insert myself into an entire weekend. Now, that's just me personally. That doesn't mean that, you know, whatever somebody else chooses is their choice. But I don't have the right to put my hands on anybody. I don't have the right to um, try to inflict my particular sexual attraction on somebody if I know they're not attracted to women. Um, there are just certain boundaries that you have to have and be respectful of. And I don't know how I got on this rant, but it's a good rant, isn't it? <laughs> so it it's fine. And you're, you're kind of getting to something I wanted to discuss. So okay. while I was at camp, I brought up that this was the topic that's going to be on the next show. And I said, I think it's an important topic. Um, And people were like, oh, well, what's the topic about? And I mentioned it. I was really surprised by somebody's response, who I find to be very even keel of a good temperament. And they like took a stance I wasn't expecting. And the analogy they gave was they're, they're on the side of having a female member of a bear club does not make sense because their concept is it's for bears and like bear lovers. But I think they, they mean that in the way of like, not only like appreciating physically, but really appreciating. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And the thing he said was to me, it's no different than if you had a tricycle and you wanted to join a motorcycle club. No, that's not how this works. You need to have the thing that goes with the thing. (laughs) Now that's, that's, those are his words. I'm paraphrasing, but I think where he was coming from is 
what's the point in having a club if you can't be exclusionary? What's, you know, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, I'm, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with him, but I see his point of bear clubs came about because gay men did not feel that they had a collective space of their own. So they created these spaces, right. i.e. clubs, and they went to people's homes and potlucks and bar nights and on and on and on. Yeah. But the bear community, notably now, is not what the bear community was in the late 80s when it started. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm not saying that this person is of a f- particular generation and they speak for that entire generation, but notably another person who's approximately their same age was kind of like right on the same page with them. And I felt like in this interesting cusp between a certain age and for possibly mindset and like a different group where I think it's not as important to some people, perhaps younger generations about the definitions and the, the parameters Mm -hmm. of that, because I didn't have the time to get into the conversation with them, but I was like, the next thing for me was, well, let's talk about trans bears. How do Mm -hmm. you feel about that? Do you know what I mean? Like, like where I understand that they're saying we need to draw a line somewhere. And I wanted to challenge that a little bit and say, but where do you draw the line and Mm -hmm. how Mm -hmm. do you draw the line? Yeah. But there are always going to be men that feel that way. Um, um, and, and that's okay. Um, I mean, I, I have my personal choices about things. I mean, just because, uh, um, I go, uh, my, my local leather bar is the barracks. I would mm-hmm. like to see them allow leather women into the bar and they do. Do I want them to see, to allow them to let all women into the bar? No, I do not. <laughs> um, and it has fair. nothing to do with their gender. It has to do with being a part of a culture that enters into that bar and understanding what that means. Yeah. Now, simply because you're a man, you can walk in that bar and may or may not know what it means without any hesitation whatsoever. You may have only looked at pictures of men in leather and thought, ooh, that looks hot. Order myself a pair of leather pants and put a chest harness on, and I'm walking in, and I fit in. Mm -hmm. You may have never been to a leather event. You may have not had any contact with any other history or person of leather in your life, but you can walk in unnoticed. Whereas there could be a female who has maybe been very involved with the leather community, might have even been a boot black for two, three years, been in service, um, offering things, uh, going to events, boot blacking at different bars. And simply because they would be a woman, they're looked at differently because they walk in the bar. Now, really, which one fits there better? (laughs) It doesn't always matter. It matters about what who the person really is. It's not always their gender, their sexuality, what they look like on the outside. It's who they are on the inside. Yeah. And um, so I don't blame them. You know, I'm almost 50 myself. I bet they were pretty close to 50, weren't they? If not 50. Well, I don't, I'll be honest. I don't know their exact ages. So right. I'm going to give you a 50% on the guess because I, I don't think you're off, but I don't know yeah. for sure. <laughs> well, you know, I mean... The other thing is, too, is the gay men that lived in the 80s um, have a different perspective on things, and they have the right to. Maybe they haven't met me. I don't know that was so <laughs> well, so, and But that's an interesting point that you bring up, though, Tammy, and I think that Damon and, and, and Jeffrey and I would all side to that part of this discussion about, but you need to meet this individual Get yeah. a sense of them, and you may find yourself, and those are not the right words, won over yeah. to the understanding of that there there is no malcontent, there is no harm, there's no, like, you know, uh, crude concept behind this. You know, you're not, you're not walking up and putting your hands on men and, you know, no. flirting with them and trying to, you know, create, uh, you know, triads or orgies or whatever anybody hey, might hey, be thinking. Yeah, let's not. Let's not take it to an extreme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All 
right. So that's not priority one. Let's put it that way. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, and that's the thing that I've been thinking about, though. And, and I was just like, I think that this is where we're going to see some some schism and some shifting and some uncomfortability. I've kind of, I think, mentioned it before on the podcast that like the trans community is the next front mm. as far as like legalities and stuff, but also within the gay community, like gays have not always and lesbians and even bisexual individuals. I don't think they've always been welcoming or appropriately like, you know, paying attention to their behavior and their manners towards individuals that are trans. And it's, mm -hmm. so it's interesting to me to see the same kind of thing come up about when you talk about women being involved in the bear community. It's like, and it's like, I didn't have the time to explain who this person is, meaning you and, and your background and all this different kind of stuff. I, I was like, but maybe that's really what it is about. Like all other things that have happened, you can formulate your own opinion, but until you meet a person that fits what's being described, perhaps you should recognize that your opinion is very skewed. Well, yeah. you know, I, I, d I mentioned just a little bit ago that somebody had a conversation that hurt my feelings a little bit on Facebook. And, you know, when I pointed out to him, when you say things like that about heterosexual women, that includes me. And and typically this is the response that I get when I point out to people, when you say things like that, that's a blanket statement. And that includes me. And they always say, but, th but I don't mean you. But how do you know that somewhere out there, there aren't 10 more people just like me that you would feel just as comfortable with, the same sense of connection, the same sense of camaraderie, this, you know, be able to build the same level of friendship that I have been able to build with you. And we're terribly good friends. When you make blanket statements like that, then you include them and you negate yourself the opportunity of possibly ever being able to meet that person and making a decision about them based on an individual um, interaction rather than just these blanket statements about we don't allow this and we don't allow that. Yeah. You know, I don't, and I'm not totally against exclusivity. I think there are, we all in some way, shape or form practice a certain amount of exclusivity. I don't automatically run up to every single person that I meet in the bar and go, hello, how are you? Welcome. I want to watch you for a while and make sure you ain't batshit crazy or something. If you yeah. come out and you're there for a while and then you come out again and you're still there and then you come out again, eventually I see a little bit of presence in a community. And that's kind of how it works. And I don't expect for people that I've never met to just simply say, oh, okay, we'll change all the rules for one person just because it suits you. They don't have to do that. <laughs> they really don't. And if I am ever any place that I feel that uncomfortable, I, or I know that it's making somebody else feel uncomfortable, then I choose to leave. Not everybody does that. And I choose to leave quietly. Um, not everybody does that. And unfortunately, sometimes that leaves a negative taste in people's mouths because they've created such a negative um, issue about inclusivity versus exclusivity that uh, it, it turns out to be more of a negative issue. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. It's, it's interesting because this relates in my mind to a conversation I had with my mother many, many years ago when I was a teenager. We were discussing my grandparents, her parents, and I don't remember how this came up, but my mother said to me, I need you to know something. Your grandparents have voiced opinions about black people that are not positive. And I was like, I know. And she said, but what you need to understand is their experiences in their lifetime, in their work specifically, were with bad people who happened to be black, not black people, period. And I thought that was a very interesting discussion point. My mom was basically saying, like, listen, the world is full of people. They're good people and they're bad people. And some of them just happen to be different than you. Mm. And if you're not aware of that, then you start painting with a broad swath. All X individuals are whatever. Like, mm -hmm. this is their motivation. This is their behavior. This is their whatever. And I feel that way right now about this is that 
men overall feel that women represent very specific things to them. Mm-hmm. And gay men in particular have, I don't know what else to call it, issues with mm-hmm. women. Like, you know, that I've talked about it before. Some gay men all freak out, you know. A vagina walks in the room and they completely come unglued and they don't know how to handle it. (laughs) But a man can dress in drag and look like he's a woman and have a prosthetic genitalia of a woman. And that's okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, and and, and I realize there is technically a difference, but it's like, like, it's so minutia in a way. And to me, that speaks more about you and who you are as a person and your mentality and your, your output than the issue truly at hand. And, I, and to me, that's relatable to everything, though. I mean, it's no different than people who, you know, speak ill of the gay community, period. You know, those, those yeah. you know, flaming faggots, those dykes, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? Like, they, And it's kind of like, yeah, but do you know any? Do you know right. any gay men? Do you know any lesbians? Do you know any bi people? Do you know any trans people? Like, like and when you kind of find out that they kind of don't or that their interactions have been bad then it makes sense why they have the opinion that they do because mm-hmm. they just, they don't, I don't know. They don't know any better. Right. And you know, that's why you just take the opportunity to chip away a little bit at a time and you never, ever going to, but, um, you know, where I'm at right now is a totally different place than I was at 10 years ago. Hmm. Um, I've come a long way in 10 years. I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of really, really interesting and fabulous and wonderful people. And uh, in in many instances, they have been absolutely my rock over the last 10 years. And those are the people that I choose to call family. And I like bears. I like to be around bears. I like to be a part of the things that bears do because I get it. Um, You know, when I slammed my magazines and a bottle of poppers down on the counter and the guy goes, you know, these are gay men. I was like, yeah, (laughs) I was like, okay, this is what I wanted, though. And not everybody gets that. Right. And, And I think that's in some ways unfortunate that they're not respecting you as an individual, you know, they're they're. It seems like they're kind of forcing upon you, whether they mean to or not, a construct that doesn't fit you. You know, well, by saying, yeah. they, you know, do you realize that these are gay men? And there's a part of you that's like, I don't care if they're gay or they're straight. They're hot. <laughs> I would like to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Heads on buying the magazines. Like, like the back of my head, I'm kind of like, that's a really sucky business person. They should just sell it. Why do they care yeah. who they sell yeah. it to? <laughs> <laughs> this is truth. I mean, I've heard that a million times over when someone says, like, like uh, for instance, there was a, well, still is a bar in a nearby city that's owned by a straight couple that that uh, they changed their focus to the gay clientele. And when they first opened, everybody seemed to have an opinion about that. I went and met them. <laughs> They're a great couple. And I was trying to feel out what the situation was. Like, you know, are they seriously out just for a dollar? You know, and that's not cool to the community because nobody wants to be taken and seen as just a pocketbook. Mm-hmm. And on the flip side of it, you know, is there something else going on? Like, you know, is there and, – and I don't mean to infer this, but it was kind of like – I think there was some speculation like, you know, is she a beard? Are they swingers? Like, you know, <laughs> like what's what's the whole dealio? Because I think everyone just kind of raised an eyebrow about that because we moved so far as a community that now gay – people could own their own businesses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it reversed itself for the longest time. Any gay establishment was owned by heterosexual people. Um, you know, kind of like we discussed recently about with Stonewall, you know, the mafia took over the bar and decided to switch it over. Yeah. So the question here was, you know, what's going on? So I met with a couple and I figured out two things. One for them, it was a practical business sense. They flat out said to my face, we don't know you, but the reality is we could do better to survive as a bar with the big gay community, you have a disposable income and you will spend it. Mm -hmm. And we're not treating you as a pocketbook. We want to help you as a community have a place to go, you know, and all this type of stuff. But let's not fool ourselves. We're trying to get by and live a life. Like we have a house payment. We got bills, you know, like. And so I thought it was a very frank conversation. And the second thing I walked away from it was 
Well, I hope you guys get used to the fact that your husband is going to get hit on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because he pretty much looked like a bear. And I was like, OK, well, and I kind of made a joke about, you know, how do you feel about that? And I said to both of them, you know, I said to her, how do you feel about women hitting on you? How do you feel about men hitting on you? And they were both like it's happened a bunch of times in our lives and we don't care. There you go. And I was like, well, good. As long as you're on that, like you're not coming from a place, I guess, of I don't want to say ignorance, but unawareness. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so I thought that was interesting that that whole thing about them owning a business and not being a part of the community and how everybody treated that. And I'm looking at it now where folks are, I don't know, they're just trying to wrap their brain around this new thing, what to do with it, how to deal with it. Um, and I think that there's more to come in the years to ahead of us and what that will be. I don't know. It's it, to me, it's kind of the same thing as we've discussed about. I think in our most recent episode, we talked about the change that there are less gay bars than there were before. Mm -hmm. What purpose does a gay bar serve? Um, society has changed. Younger generations now do not conceptually understand or have the same experiences of what it is to be gay. Yeah. You know, they're, they're coming out at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you know, in school and having like they're dating and having open relationships. And so, you know, a lot of that changes the landscape. And I think it becomes possibly a perspective of who cares, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so I don't, I don't know if this is an age issue necessarily by generation, but I can see where some people will kind of, you know, feel that the history has a place and, and bucking that is not necessarily something they're interested in or changing it, I guess is more appropriate. Well, you know, all of us, depending on the era in which we grow up in and the people that you associate with and the friends that you have and the things that are going on in the world around you during that time, um, you grow up differently. You know, I, um, as Damon said, I was at the Cincinnati um, Pride Parade and I was like a big old goober. I like got all choked up at one point. Uh -huh. I mean, like really got teary eyed because I was riding in the parade in this Jeep with two gay men and um, another good friend of mine that is a heterosexual female that's very involved in the leather community. And we're pulling this, um, <laughs> this float of uh, all gay men except for one woman who is one of the men's daughters who's there to support him. Everyone's dressed in leather and their puppies and everything. And while we're going along this parade route, um, I saw the people cheering and I saw a couple standing there with their kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, little kids with their faces painted. And these were, um, you know, heterosexual couples that brought their children out. I mean, some of them in wagons and strollers. <laughs> and those are children that are going to grow up as a part of their, their life that they have gone to gay pride parades and in their lifetime they will have never known because they won't have been old enough to remember that couples could not marry freely mm -hmm. I mean it, I know it's like such a goobery that's a chick thing but I just got <laughs> choked up because you know I mean my kids are in their you know 18 and 24 and they will remember things, but those kids are growing up in a totally different world with parents that think enough about equality and treating people as equal that they took their children out on a rainy day to line up at a parade route. And for those of you that do not have or have not had small children, that you still have to change their diapers and push them around in strollers and carry bottles and park and walk downtown, that's not an easy thing to do. They really made a commitment to bring their kids out and stand along a parade route in a bunch of people because they felt strongly about having their kids there. Yeah. And I, I just, you know... I just thought so much of that, that that was, you know, so depending on how you grow up and what your age is, it is important sometimes. It really is. Yeah. And 
so my question for you, Tammy, is to, to switch it a little bit. We made reference to the fact that at Kentucky, oh, another woman uh, who's a title holder, I believe, mm-hmm. spoke with you. Is she? Yeah. She's also a member of Kentucky Bourbon Bears, correct? I I don't I don't know that for sure. Okay. Um, I know that she is a member of the Derby City Bears. Um, she is their Goldilocks, but I I. I couldn't swear to you that she is a member of the Kentucky Bourbon Bears because she actually is in Louisville and the Bourbon Bears are located out of um, Lexington primarily. So I'm sure that she knows them, but I don't know that she's actually um, a member. um, Okay. So are you the only woman that's a part of the Kentucky Bourbon Bears? No. um, I believe that there are other women that are members now. I think we're probably certainly still in the minority. I don't know the exact number, <laughs> but I would suspect probably five or less. Um, but I, I believe I was the first, and but there have been some since then. Okay. And then from what we're talking about, uh, this woman who was at, and I apologize because I don't remember her name, um, she was at the Kentucky event And she's Uh a part of Derby City Bears. Yeah, she's a part of the Derby City Bears. So there's at least two clubs right now, understandably kind of close to each other regionally, that have women that are involved, one of which happens to be a title holder. Uh, So it appears they had a contest of some sort. Yeah, the Derby City Bears um, had a contest, and they um, included... In their contest, the division of um, uh, a Goldilocks, and um, her name is actually Laura Silverman Tom Thompson, and she is their Derby City Goldilocks. Hmm. And <clears throat> at that point, when they had that, I kind of put a bug in Chuck's ear and said, "You know, it would be really nice if the Bourbon Bears did that too." <laughs> 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 so I did kind of stir the pot a little bit, but it really, I wanted it to be their decision. Um, right. And, and the Chuck that you're referring to, I believe, is Chuck Mallory, who I think yeah. currently is the president of Kentucky Bourbon Bears. I, they just had their elections, oh, okay. I believe. So. But I think he was yes, previously he was. In, the, in the past yeah. year, approximately. Yeah. And, and he's a really nice guy. I noticed that he was the one that spoke at the Kentucky event and basically said, you know, just to explain to everybody, when you came to the event, there was a thing to vote on. I want to clarify yeah. on it a little bit, and I'd like to have these women come up and speak. And I was like, and that's when it clicked. I was like, I really wish you'd done the voting afterwards. Like, <laughs> you know, but that's just me. Um, but I see where he's going, and he said something. I don't remember the exact wording, but he basically kind of said, this this subject or this topic will probably be revisited. Yeah, he did. And I was like, this man kind of understands how a concept and, and I think a belief in this being okay and that we need to kind of work within ourselves to determine our own comfort levels and, and what that means and why. Yeah. I haven't really run into anybody that's really, um, well, maybe I haven't run into anybody that's really been unkind to me because I try not to be unkind to other people. And... I'm not going to say I'm always successful at that, but, you know, um, I don't try to push my presence on people and it is okay if they don't want women to be in their space. They have their right to be at an event that they choose to be at that they can't recreate any place else. Um, you, you can't just have a hotel full of, um, bears packed to the ceiling and find that any place else. That's the only place that you can really create that is at a bear event. Mm-hmm. And I get that. Um, but y'all need to stock up on some extra damn toilet paper and towels. That's all I'm saying. Because <laughs> I swear to God. Uh. <laughs> when I went to take my shower on Sunday morning... And I pulled out a towel, and the only thing that was left was a hand towel for my big of fat ass. I said, I don't think so. I want y'all uh, to know you need to get some more damn towels. Uh-oh. <laughs> don't forget your towel. Oh. That's too funny. 
I am not kidding. I took a picture of it and sent it out to a bunch of the guys and said, I just want y'all to know you've used too many damn towels out there in a swimming pool. And this is all that's left for me to wipe on. (laughs) Come out there dripping. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. So I think what you're telling us is you face the same issues that we do. I sure do. Somebody wanted to come in and use my bathroom because I was one of the only rooms left that had toilet paper in it. I said, I don't think so. I better drive on to Walgreens, bitch. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, what you're what you're describing is it has nothing to do with with you as a person. It's just that's universal. It's It's well known when you go to a bear run, we tax every department, every supply chain, you name it. Yes, there's, Lord. There's never enough air conditioning, uh-huh. electricity, Wi-Fi, towels, <laughs> or sundry items of any sort. <laughs> Food is about the only thing they seem to get right most of the time. And I think it's because we put the fear of you-know-what into them, that if they run out, there will be a riot. <laughs> That's so, probably true. I think outside of that, they, you know, they, they're they not necessarily up on everything else. Even ice, I hear notoriously over and over again. The ice oh, machine yeah. just gets tapped out. And I'm like, well, yeah, if you put a couple hundred people in a building at the same time and all they're going to do, no offense, He's is drunk. drink, whether it be alcoholic or not, you're, you're going to go through a lot of ice. Mm-mm. Well, now, toilet paper is a serious issue. I just got to uh-huh. say that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I was not aware of the TP thing. So I would oh, say my you – to me, this is no different than, uh, I don't know. Like my dad was a long distance truck driver for a while, and anybody who's working in the trucking industry, they always have a couple of things that's in the truck, and one of them definitively is a spare roll. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> this is unfortunate, but you might have to think about bringing one in the future. <laughs> and a can of Lysol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bear survival. Uh, I know. Right. Pack. <laughs> Well, I, I yeah, I mean, Lord knows, David. I don't know if you heard about it, what happened in, in Kentucky, and I don't know if you heard about our moment, Miss Tammy. We arrive in Kentucky. There's four of us. We are we you know road trip. We get down there. I'm sharing my room with one person who's a good friend of mine, and then the other two are in any other room. My roommate. No sooner than we get in the room, we have barely been able to check in. Uses the bathroom, and our bathroom had no ventilation system. Oh, there was no fan or anything. So even though he pretty much closed the door, some stench of death <laughs> came out of that bathroom <laughs> and nearly suffocated me in the bedroom. <laughs> and I started carrying on and I said, what ungodly thing have you unleashed? And why on earth did you wait till we got here to the hotel? <laughs> and he kept apologizing over and over again. He's like, it's the medication I'm on. And, blah, blah. and I was like, you can blame it on the meds all you want. It came out of your body. You were totally to blame for it. <laughs> oh so my. we made a trip to Walmart for supplies. And I bought these like gel bead air freshener things in a little mm-hmm. plastic container. I bought two of them. And I mm-hmm. opened both of them. And I put them both in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And, and they worked actually really, really well. And when we went to leave, he said, are you going to take them? And I was like, no. I don't need them at home. Like, <laughs> like, first of all, I live alone. And second of all, I got like, I got air fresher stuff. Like I, I'm covered. I've got, a sure you got I've got some air. I can circulate that air. It won't, it won't bother me. Right. Uh, but you really need but, to take a, a box of wooden matches with you too. <laughs> That's true. Well, I don't know. I thought we might've, you know, you could have exploded. <laughs> yeah, we could have, we could have damaged the nice new room that was renovated. <laughs> uh, uh. But it, but that's so that's the, on the tips list of things to take to a bear run. Air freshener for the bathroom is a must. Yes. Mm-mm-mm. And especially when you have toilet paper. Yeah, especially when you have more people staying with you. <laughs> yes. Well. <laughs> well. 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 Good deal. Um, oh. What do you think, just to, to kind of wrap up on the topic, where do you think the future lies for women, a.k.a. Goldilocks, uh, being involved in the bear community? Well, I mean, I don't think there's a, a going to be like this mass influx of, <laughs> of Goldilocks women. I think there's always going to be um, a certain little um, group of women that identify and 
prefer to associate with bears, but I don't think there's going to be like this mad influx of you let one person in and 1,500 are going to come rolling in behind her. Yeah. carrying their box of Tampax and um, Lysol. It just, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I realize that I'm in the minority and that there are not tons and tons of women that share the, the same interests that I do. But I think that to um, make blanket statements to exclude people, simply because they're women or they're trans men uh, is wrong. <clears throat> but I think you just change those things one person at a time. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe if I'd have been sitting around that fire with you, well, they'd have thrown me out because I'd have been really in trouble. But whomever that one person was or two people that had had a negative experience, maybe we could have had dialogue and maybe at some point they might've said, well, you know, you're not so bad. Yeah. And when you start having those conversations that end up being, yeah, but I'm not talking about you. Well, then you might not be talking about everybody. So yeah. don't make such blanket statements about people, you know, Again, a certain amount of exclusivity is perfectly fine. Um, I don't disagree with it at all. I still believe that there are male spaces that need to be honored and respected, and um, and you need to always be respectful of that. It doesn't mean you get to make an excuse and say, I'm drunk and I'm this and mm -hmm. I'm sorry and, <clears throat> you know... If you're that drunk and you can't conduct yourself appropriately, then you need to be escorted out. Yeah. There's a level of respect involved. And yeah. I, we're not, not, we don't want you to, you know, bow down to the almighty bear, as it were. But, you know, uh, be respectful. Um, you wouldn't want someone groping all up on you if you were, you know, in, if the situation were flipped. So. Oh. I don't know. Well, <laughs> well, right. well, you uh, know, I think that a lot of people, whenever they take things so personally and it's not always about you as a yeah. person, just because those two gentlemen have said that, um, they prefer that women not be, um, as included as some people would like for them to be included doesn't mean that they're saying that personally about me and you know I think that's a lot of times where people get hooked up is they start defending themselves personally when they're not really talking about you they haven't had the opportunity to know you yet so rather than jump all over them and get upset because you feel like somebody's slighting you personally just take the time to enter into some dialogue. And if you really ha have an interest in be in, in, and you think you're a Goldilocks and you like to be around bears, then don't go in like, you know, it's a damn jihad. That wasn't probably politically correct. But enter gingerly. Be a part of their runs and be a part of their bear nights at the bar and find ways that you could be a part of their energy and their space without being intrusive and unkind, if that makes sense. And eventually you'll find that if you're not there, somehow you're missing because you become a part of the group rather than an outlier. Yeah, I think <clears throat> you bring up a good point get to know individuals and make decisions based on that as opposed to um, things you don't have a well-formed mind about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, but I, I think that's just a, a life thing, period. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I agree with you. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say is, <laughs> you know, sometimes that comes with maturity and life experience and you know, who you've had the opportunity to meet in your life. I have certainly met a lot of much more interesting and eclectic people over the last 10 years 
Um, and I may have not said exactly the same things that have come out of my mouth today as I did, as I did 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn and grow every single day and you have the opportunity to, (laughs) is it win friends and influence people every day? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, no. And I think that's part of what this is about. And that's why I wanted to have a discussion about, this concept of, of women being involved in, um, and, you know, not making presumptions or jumping to conclusions off of it, you know, that, uh, that there is definitively a, a place or not a place or, or whichever it is. And I, and that's something I've been proud of the bear community in my, oh boy, almost 16 years, uh, of being involved that, you know, there was a time when the bear community was not, cool with the drag community they kind of were mm-hmm. like a, a no a no crossover zone mm-hmm. and that's changed over the years mm-hmm. more more than ever i know not only bears that used to be drag queens but bears that are drag queens yeah um and and i'm happy about that because it means that while some might say well we're losing our identity or we're you know we're adding you know why don't we just open the doors and let everybody in well you know that isn't that kind of what a utopian concept is at some point, you know, that yeah. we're all just treating each other fairly and equally and with respect. And, and I think you've said very well, Miss Tammy, that you have no intention of bothering people by going to places that, you know, are not your place, quote unquote. And, and by that, like, I think we previously discussed, like you've said, if I recall correctly, like if you go into a bar and you know that there's a back room, you don't go back mm-hmm. there. No, you know, and 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 that type of thing. Like you have an awareness, but you know, you're not gonna you know make a scene or cause people to to be uncomfortable. That kind of a thing. No, not and at I all. think that's a key piece for people to take away is you know, individuals being involved with the community want to be a part of the bigger brotherhood. They want that camaraderie factor, that enjoyment, and if it be you know women or men or or bear lovers who are not you know, looking like bears and they want to be able to look around in a room full of a couple hundred, you know, as we say, husky, hairy homosexuals. And so be it. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. And if you find yourself in the shoes of being a Goldilocks and you're in a group of men, you need to conduct yourself appropriately. You don't have the right to be an asshat. And if somebody comes up to you and tells you, look, you need to tone it down, you need to listen. Because you may have overstepped your boundaries. Mm-hmm. And I agree. And I think it's important that we all take the step to draw attention to that when it happens. Yeah, I do, too. I do. Um, you know, it doesn't do anybody any good and you further damage what people's experiences are as they move forward if you don't address things like that i mean lord i've had there have been times where i've drank a little too much and you know but i don't think i would ever touch anybody inappropriately or you know i can't say that i couldn't have said anything because lord knows i probably have but (laughs) i don't think i've said anything to hurt anybody's feelings um but you know sometimes you just need to say well you might want to rethink that or, you know, be careful or come over here and sit down for a little bit. Let's talk <laughs> for anybody, anybody that's acting like an ass hat. Maybe they don't even realize they're doing that. And, and I think that's the key pieces about anything, whether you're in a relationship with that person, you're a friends with that person or they're a complete stranger. Behavior modification only comes about because they're made aware of it. Yeah. You know, like uh, I'll give an example of. When I was younger, someone in my family critiqued the fact that I didn't seem very grateful. I had a birthday party and I got gifts and it appears from their recollection, I didn't thank people for my gifts. And my mother specifically took that very hard and was upset about the fact that she took, tried to take pride in being a parent and felt like she royally screwed up one piece of it. And it had a big impact. And so I've tried my best as I grew up over the years to keep that in the back of my mind. Like don't give people the opportunity to think that you don't appreciate, um, you know, that, that they do things for you, whether you expect them or not. 
Right. And that experience taught me, like, if that person hadn't said anything, who knows? I probably, you know, could have grown up to be an obnoxious adult asshole. Well, <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, ah. But <laughs> well, I kid. But good huh. deal. So uh, I think we've discussed pretty good. Are we welcome to move on to wrap up the show? I think so. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah. I think we're going to talk about men in the most inappropriate and objectified way, Miss Tammy, if you're okay with that. Oh, rock on. (laughs) Anyways, this. This is a big man. And uh, a big big man. There you go, Miss Tammy. Okay. He's a big man. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I love me my big men. Hold on. Right. Oh my. Why was? There's Why did they have a microphone picture. up to his stomach? Yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, what? <laughs> was that a microphone? Yeah, I was yeah. wondering what that was. Thank you for identifying that for me. Mm-mm. I thought it was like fat calipers or something. Like they were measuring. <laughs> His body fat? And I was like, that's rude. Like, why, is, <laughs> why are we doing this in public? Like, there's... But apparently, maybe he was, like, you know, stomach growling or something. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I don't know. But I think he's hot. He's a big dude. Yep. I do like big dudes. That's just me. So I'm pretty simple. <laughs> Jeffrey. I'm pretty simple. I like big dudes. Ta-da! <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Moving on, Mr. Damon. Whose computer just froze? Oh. Actually, we can skip him for the moment, and then I'll get <laughs> go next. Um, I'm going to own, Miss Tammy, that this one is not as uh, polite. <laughs> Oh, I don't think wait for it to problem. open up. <laughs> um, I decided to title this one Sunbathing Ginger because some of us on the uh, hosting panel have a thing for gingers. <laughs> and it's perfectly timed for the summer season because he's sitting outside in the sun there's lots of green foliage if you bother to look past and pay attention and uh he has decided to take things into his own hand (laughs) literally (laughs) 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 and I um I totally approve of this picture It'll be posted on, on my... It's already on my Tumblr account. It'll be on our... Cuts our uh, Tumblr account. Yeah. I was like, about, yes, about please. Tumblr. I will take one to go. Or wherever he's at. I just have to get there. <laughs> I will travel. <laughs> mm-hmm. And do you, Damon? Your pick for oh God, this week? On. I've got to get back to the dock. Um, okay. This one's also not a... Well, it's semi-appropriate. Oh, get on with it. Just There's so. no such thing as, as semi-appropriate for for uh, Miss Tammy. Everything anyway, is appropriate with Miss Tammy. It is. I called it perfect uniform because that's what they said. It's um, perfect uniform for a boy. Um, it's a very fun-looking um, jockstrappy kind of thing. Jockstrap harness singlet kind of combination. Oh, yeah. But with the seat back of it, it's his ass. But that's okay because, as we all know, thick thighs. Uh huh. Thick thighs. Uh-huh. So yeah, he's got a nice big butt, and he's got a nice everything. He's got a nice big butt, and he cannot lie. This uh-huh. should be a series of pictures. Damn it! There should be like a side and a front. I need a full three hundred and sixty. <laughs> I agree. I would like. I would have liked to have seen the front, um, only because I think he's kind of cute. From what I can see from this angle. He's, he's cute for the back. Let's see how he is for the front. But her front. It's probably though. the same. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, but it's a, it's a yeah, I, I've been I've been I've had a thing for ass recently, and it's it's um, yeah. So and I and I don't know if I could rock that jockstrap harness singlet combination, but I would like to try. Oh, you know who it would look great. Oh, they actually both probably would. Mm-hmm. Chess and and Matt and maybe Gabe. Sorry, my Just mind. That whole is, crew. Yeah, my mind is like, huh? That would be interesting to see. So, are you saying that we should have a, like another group photo done of them? Yes. <laughs> of course, they'd have to get these. I don't know. I don't know where. I would love to know where he got it. That's my. Like logic side taking over, like yeah, wow, that's really hot looking. I wonder where he got it because I want one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So we got our Tumblr picks now. Moving into the links. Uh, one thing I kind of forgot about the last episode because that was kind of like our right after July Fourth episode was my annual uh, recommendation of. The Complete History of America, abridged by the British Shakespeare Hung Company. Oh. You can get it on a DVD in a few places. Uh, I gave you the, the Amazon link, but um, I think if you just go to ReduceShakespeare.com, you can also purchase them directly from them, too. Hmm. Reduced Shakespeare.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, favorite lines. I made. I wanted to make love to her in the worst way, standing up in a hammock. Nice, 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 nice. Fun. Uh, that's <laughs> my uh, recommendation. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, All right. My recommendation is for people to check out online. If you are familiar before, we have, uh, at least I think I post about these. On YouTube, there are a series of videos that have been made called Princess Rap Battles. Uh huh. And Whitney Avalon is the main person who puts these together. She's really funny, and she did one on Maleficent versus Daenerys. I think that's how you pronounce it from Game of Thrones. They yeah. pronounce it Daenerys, but it's uh, Daenerys. Ah. So it's fun. Basically, each person is representing the character, and then they literally have a rap battle back and forth between the two of them, and they rip on each other's character and their powers or their personality or whatever they can bring up. It's quite fun. The Princess Leia... Um, and is it Galadriel from the Lord of the think, Rings? Yeah. is one of the most epic ones they did. <laughs> oh, so yeah, fun times. It, it highly amused me. So it's a fun little thing to check out. And yeah, I like the rap battles. They can be fun. <sighs> That's always fun. Mm-hmm. Hey, guess what? That's the end of the show. Oh. Oh, right over 100 minutes. In any case, uh, you can def- find plenty of places to contact us. You can pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a dirty message at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash CubsOutLoud. CubsOutLoud.com dot Tumblr dot com. Excuse me. Uh, Twitter.com slash CubsOutLoud. Google.com slash plus Cubs Out Loud. You can also pop over to bearunderground.net, the official bear website of Cubs Out Loud, and join the the Cubs Out Loud entourage over there. Uh, Please pop over to iTunes, give us a review, rate us. uh, Anything uh, you can do there will help give us more visibility to other fans so you can share it with the rest of the world. Uh, Also, you can give us a review in Stitch Radio. Give us a thumbs up, review it. And we'll read it on the show as well. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It says box, type box, puppy, box, cub, box, Something or other. <laughs> and I am Theater Cub79 on anywhere you want to find me. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm GareBear73, uh, pretty much anywhere the internet exists. <laughs> <laughs>
And And I am on primarily on FetLife, which is Miss Tammy, M-S-T-A-M-M-Y. I know, because I'm original like that. Uh Uh-huh. And she's on Growler. I I am on Growler. If any of our listeners would like to reach out to you, Miss Tammy, on Growler, how would they find you? Um, Again, I went with the originality approach. (laughs) It's Miss Tammy, M-S-T-A-M-M-Y. Yay! And with that... Uh, say good night, everybody. Good night. Good Have a night. good one, y'all.